Next Curve. Hi everyone, this is Leonard Lee, Managing Director of Next Curve, and I am here in beautiful San Diego at the Intercontinental Hotel here in downtown, and I'm here for a 5G Summit, Qualcomm's 5G Summit, and I am joined here today by John Smee, Thank one you. of my favorite guys at Qualcomm. Man, great to right. see you. Thank you for being on. I'm really excited because I'm all about 5G, you know, yep. and I love talking to you about 5G, but why don't you introduce yourself to our audience really quickly? All right, well, I'm John Smee, Senior Vice President of Engineering, and I head up the Global Wireless Research Team at Qualcomm. So been there for over 20 years, started on 3G, 4G, now driving 5G Advanced and 6G. And I also always enjoy chatting with Leonard because it's a perspective of how is the ecosystem changing? How's 5G changing? And it's not just about standardization and new features, it's really about how the whole ecosystem yeah. is changing to recognize that value. Yeah. So yeah. looking forward you're, to the conversation. You're being far too kind. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, anybody want to talk 5G, this is the man to talk to and uh, with. And uh, you know, what I'd like to talk to you about today is number one, give you an opportunity to share with the audience uh, what were some of your big points that you made this morning on 5G Advanced and maybe give us a sense of where 5G is going. You know, before we hit the record button, we had a little bit of a chat yep. on some of the, what I call funky features or the funky aspects that people might need to start to think about. Yep. But if you can just uh, give sort of a, um, a grounding, sure. if you will, on where we're headed with 5G. Yeah, so I guess the way to think about it is that 5G, it's obviously we've been working on it for many years at Qualcomm as a technology innovator. And now we're in the commercialization phase. And obviously that is not a one release, one deployment situation. It's how 5G continues to evolve right. and the deployments evolve and applications evolve. And so here we are at Qualcomm's 5G Summit right now talking also about the connected intelligent edge. And the reason that's important is that with 5G having recently completed release 17, embarking on 5G advanced, it's gonna take us those next five years of 5G evolution it's really about how are we evolving 5G itself and how are we intersecting these opportunities yeah. at the edge of the network, the right. connected intelligent edge. Yeah, and um, I think the, the key word that you're using here is evolution. Um, you know, I think uh, in the, the general public, there's this expectation that 5G, at least the, the promise of 5G is gonna be here today, right? But, you know, uh, when you uh, speak to folks like you, especially particularly you, you start to realize, I mean, this is a really difficult effort and that, you know, previous G's, if you want to call it that, those were significant efforts. And the promises of each of those generations took a tremendous amount of investment in invention, technology development, you know, commercialization, deployment, right? Yeah. Uh, and none of that stuff is easy. None of it happens overnight, right? Mm -hmm. But um, you touched on... Well, you did mention 5G Advanced, but I think uh, if you don't mind sharing with the audience uh, what's happening there, sure. like, here, and I'll give you my take on it. On it. Um, I know that you know sort of how I'm looking at this, but um, in February, you invited a bunch of analysts to come out and check out some of the 5G Advanced stuff that you guys are working on. And many, you know, one of the things that I found really curious was that some of the features were not necessarily what you would traditionally call comms type features, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe you can uh, share some perspective there because there's there's a lot of funky stuff yep. that are part of like the advance, right? Absolutely, and I think it's part of that perspective that we look at mobile broadband and we look at building an amazing cellular network, right? And right. so if we look at that, all the pioneering work Qualcomm did enabling 3G yeah. and then designing 4G for the smartphone era, right? right. And so right. 4G was designed before the smartphone, right. but it was designed with enough bandwidth and carrier aggregation, new yeah. ways of enabling you know, gigabit per second LTE, right? So that right. 4G era from 2010 to 2020 yeah. was about that foundational perspective on amazing mobile broadband. Right. And it opened up obviously all of these new applications, yeah. the things people are doing on their cell phones, um, you know, whether you're talking today or you're talking three years ago, right. pretty impressive stuff. Now, so when we designed 5G, it was about where do we want to go? 
2020 all the way through 2030. Right. And it is that perspective to talk about ev evolution that it wasn't just about, hey, let's make sure 5G is better than 4G at those right. original KPIs. Right. You know, we talk about data rate, we talk about yeah. coverage, capacity, the traditional cellular things uh -huh. that, you know, differentiated what is an amazing network mobility right. feature set. Now, so 5G was designed to go into factories. It was right. designed to scale to so many more connected right. devices. Right. Um, and also, we already had our perspectives about augmented and virtual reality when we right. designed 5G. So as we're looking at 5G advanced, one of the technologies that's moving forward, things like positioning. Yeah. So for new types of devices, so whether it's an AGV in a factory, mm -hmm. whether it's someone wearing augmented virtual reality headset, well, the network and the device need to understand where the device is, right. how it's moving around. Mm -hmm. Or think of a connected vehicle, uh, it's driving under a, um, a bridge, maybe it's in a tunnel, right. or maybe it's deep in a parking garage, right. and we still wanna understand position and range. Right. Right. So the fact that 5G toolbox is wider bandwidth, right. it's higher band, it's more directional, right. then all of a sudden we can make amazing positioning yeah. technologies in 5G. Now, so that's not only about implementing stuff on the device side, right. uh, standardizing stuff in the air interface yeah. and implementing stuff on the network side, it's also about the role of the cloud. Right. So the way we process information from a device and other devices to mm. get very accurate positioning yeah. But that means, yes, we're taking a step back beyond moving bits around right. towards how are we architecting a network, how yeah. are we architecting the framework, and architecting right. the devices yeah. for new types of positioning technologies. Right. Right. Um, and even you can look at this perspective of the world we're in today right. with all of these connected devices, the physical right. world, right. that data is being digitized. Yeah. And those devices then are sharing more information. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they're being virtualized, mm -hmm. new forms of you know human compute interface. Right. So you put that together and you realize the networks are moving well beyond data. So even yeah. machine learning data will be exchanged over wireless. Mm -hmm. So the devices are getting more intelligent. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be exchanging information. Now they're also gonna have more awareness of their physical environment. Yeah. And that's also being exchanged right. between each other right. and between the network. Right. So then all of a sudden, you're architecting a solution beyond the core foundational right. communications part. Right. And I would say that's one of the things that makes 5G yeah. fundamentally different than 4G. Right, yeah, and, and, and so one of the things that we talked about um, before we started this, uh, this session is, you know, I mentioned to you how it seems like, uh, you know, speaking of bits and bytes, this is, this is all, it's almost becoming an IoT-ish Infrastructure, right? I mean, it, it, and I think that's one of the reasons why, when you speak to industrial folks, they're so excited about the positioning mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, a few years ago, when I was hearing uh, some, uh, you know, uh, folks get excited about positioning, it's non five G technology stuff, but it, it's very important for them, and I think it, it's part of their um, ambition to get some degree of comprehensive, deep, contextual uh, visibility and understanding, mm -hmm. right, in, in a real-time way. Yep. And, and so one of the things that dawned upon me was this, is that as we're looking at 5G, uh, it, it, a mindset shift that might have to happen here uh, in order to get the ball rolling in, you know, on the path to value for the industrial stuff that we always talk about, is getting people on the developer side as well as the uh, service provider side uh, to start thinking about 5G and mobile wireless technology and infrastructure in a different way, right? That mm -hmm. goes beyond just bits and bytes. Absolutely, and I, I would say a way to think about it, and even when Qualcomm was talking about the connected intelligent edge, yeah. it's about the realization that the value mm -hmm. is not about monthly data plans mm -hmm. or even a monthly fee for a fixed date, like an unlimited data bucket. Yeah. It's really about the fact that the network's delivering more value. So the devices yeah. are gonna be connected. So your example of IoT is a perfect one. Right. So we look at a future of a smart connected yeah. city, um, or you can look at a smart connected hospital, and you yeah. realize every device in there is gonna be generating data. Yeah. And you can also understand data like t temporally in terms of time frame. Sure. There's instantaneous data. Right. For example, a patient has a sensor on them, yeah. and it's, it's providing information immediately to uh, the doctors, the nurses, the people who are in the room. At the same time, that data is being processed and, and filtered and understood. Now, there's intermediate term data, you know, mm -hmm. which could be 
uh, the patient's recent history. Right, right. There's also long-term data, which of course is the global accumulation yeah. of medical knowledge that is residing in interesting databases. So fusing long-term, short-term, intermediate term yeah. is all going to be also involving the fact that that edge part, right. the wireless part, mm. the network evolution mm. is is about providing that contextual information. Yeah. So yeah. when you absolutely so when you look at the value it's not that, okay, there's a connected sensor on the yeah. patient's arm or the patient's heart. It's the fact that you're architecting the network, understanding there's going to be a multitude right. of sensors right. or a multitude of devices. Right. And, and so the reason networks are deployed are not fundamentally just about coverage right. with an assumption of mobile broadband monetization. Yeah. They're being deployed to address these new use cases. Right, right. And I think that brings in, like, why is there such an interest in private networks? Right. And even hybrid public-private networks, mm -hmm. think of a container port, a logistics center, right. to address those markets, yeah. there's mobility. Those are yeah. wide area, multi-acre yeah. installations. It looks very much like a dense cellular network. Yeah. At the same time, it's all about IoT connectivity yeah. and human connectivity. Yeah. And it's about data. Yeah. The yeah. Data on the device, data gathered by sensors on the device. Right. So what's interesting then is that architecting of that network solution and the end-to-end -end approach is about realizing the value. So mm -hmm. there's also always an ecosystem discussion yeah. of who yeah. deploys, who plays, who monetizes, yeah. what's the value chain. Sure. And so Qualcomm is investing in so many of these areas right. because we say, hey, we have an opportunity to bring more of that value mm -hmm. to the edge, to right. these connected enterprises. Right. Not only connect connected consumers, but connected enterprises. Right where all of a sudden you're making the employees more yeah. productive, you're making the plant more efficient, you're improving, say, critical uptime. Right. So then all of those things rely on connectivity mm. and it requires an understanding yeah. of what's the end problem being solved. Right. And that's where you're looking at an enterprise level yep. a, yep. and an interpersonal level also of how are your people enabling their employees to be better trained. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting point of inflection for 5G, and even as you're saying, people understanding that, huh, this is a little different this time, right? where there's operators, there's spectrum, right. there's infrastructure, right. absolutely, all those things are 100% yeah. true, but it's yeah. also this expansion yeah. into these new markets and new opportunities. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I'm glad you brought up Fusion a couple of times, because you and I have had that conversation before, I think it was in mm -hmm. New York the last time we had it, Yeah, uh, but I think that's important because you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I think a lot of discourse around 5G, when we talk about it in terms of features and capabilities, is it's talked about in sort of in a siloed way, right? Yeah. You're talking about EMBB or URLC or, you know, uh, you know uh, MMTC. But when we look at the technologies and features that are being introduced and how uh, 5G advances uh, looking in terms of an evolutionary path, uh, I think my sense is this, and I'd like to get your feel. And by the way, you can tell me I'm full of full of it if you want. I'm, that's fine. It'll be edifying for the audience. Right? <laughs> They'll just say, "Hey, oh, you know, there goes Leonard again." But um, thinking in terms of fusion, that they, these are all these are all very powerful features that are coming um, that are part of the the roadmap. Yeah. And then as you start to look at applications and innovation, right? Because we always talk about you, know, you guys always talk about oh, 5G is the platform for innovation, but you know, if you're just thinking conventionally, maybe a lot of that innovative thinking doesn't really happen. But if you start to fuse ideas together, you know, idea of sensor fusion, yeah. Then maybe you can start to uh, conceive of powerful applications that go beyond what we, I mean, definitely beyond what we were working with in previous um, Gs, right? But then there's also that whole AI, everyone gets excited about AI, right? Yeah. You have to think about the potential that AI brings to the table with all the data that the infrastructure collects. And that was another takeaway that yeah. I got from uh, the, that um, day with you guys. Um, uh, on the you know the R and D event that you had, that that data now can be used in novel new ways. Yeah, and these are like huge opportunities not only for operators but for developers and application, uh, you know, uh, businesses basically. You know right. that if they can they can start to understand these things and connect the dots, then 
possibilities are much different than yep. what we were used to before. So, am I full of it or no? I, I, I well, that's a separate question, but that could be, <laughs> your question is a good one. But I, I think the the way we look at it is, if you look at the, it's not always about fusing every single thing, right? So sure. we're always we often yeah. talk of like we call the n choose k problem, where you have a growing set of potential features. And it's not about you know adopting every single feature of every release. It's okay, I've adopted everything. Hey, now we have release 16, Smart right. Factory. Release 17 took us into non-terrestrial networks and uh, you know red cap IoT, right. uh, lower power, lower bandwidth you know IoT devices. It's really more about the fact that when you look at the full set of features, mm-hmm. and it kind of goes back to this 5G, 5G advanced, a whole decade of innovation that absolutely a lot of that innovation is foundational air interface technology. It's also though innovation in the value Mm -hmm. of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And that requires um, a different set of companies and new participants to think about things a little differently. So if we look even at disaggregated virtualized RAN, well those interfaces enable new players. It enables new ways to slice and dice connectivity and compute Mm -hmm. on the infrastructure side. Um, At the same time, the devices are also going to slice and dice connectivity and compute right. in a different way. And if you look at you know the Qualcomm Snapdragon roadmap, it's also this perspective that, hey, X70 brought in AI right. into the modem on the device, right. but AI on the device is also a much more generalized part that those processors are going to bring new value to augmented virtual reality. Right. And then all of a sudden, to your point on the ecosystem, you know Qualcomm's $100 million metaverse Snapdragon fund is about the fact that the ecosystem is changing. So mm-hmm. going back to that example of a smart factory or smart hospital, right? and then you start bringing in, uh, there's different languages, there's different mm-hmm. participants with different types of training, different regulatory yeah. environments, yeah. Uh, different licensing requirements in terms of you know, being an allowed to provide medical you know, information. And so then you look at that side and you realize it's a new set of players with a richer toolbox. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that Qualcomm tries to do is say, hey, we want to build some proofs of concept, Mm. some initial implementations, particularly on the R&D side, the prototypes that you saw when you were visiting our research facility. We want to build out, well, what did we view as an interesting partitioning Mm. and an interesting set of applications Mm. for factory or for augmented virtual reality? And so then as we're looking at that, a lot of the optimization is Mm -hmm. end-to-end. And so when we go back to that, content of the 3GP releases, Mm -hmm. and then we merge that with the evolution of the business value, Mm -hmm. then you are putting things together in different ways, and you're fusing them in different ways. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes engineers will say, okay, the more I can fuse, the more accurate, the more precise I get, but also at the same time, you're adding cost or you're adding power consumption. And so trying to be more nimble in terms of what you assemble Mm -hmm. for which application. And I think that's the learning that the broader ecosystem yeah. is doing on 5G, that it's not right. instantaneous, oh, let's put 5G in a factory, done, it's a one-time a deployment and then you're on 5G until 60 shows right. up. Right. It's really this iterative evolution and it's right. also a reevaluation of, well, what are the fundamental problems we're solving? So yeah. for enterprises to adopt some of this technology, they also have to look at what are they doing today right. and then how are they you know, providing their fundamental service and then realizing, well, 5G can address a lot of these different parts. Yeah. The logistics side, the right. operation side, the uptime, but then also um, the fact that their employees are connected. They want connected laptops, right. not to be always hunting for Wi-Fi. Right. So we're right. bringing, for example, Snapdragon into a connected PC mm-hmm. where you have 5G connectivity, you have 4G right. connectivity, you have Wi-Fi 6 connectivity, yeah. evolving into Wi-Fi 7 connectivity. So very powerful connectivity in the laptop but it has that benefit of instantaneous always on. Yeah. So when we talk enterprise and you talk productivity of the workers, then all of a sudden, not only is it about new devices, it's also about other devices mm. moving to the cellular platform. Right, right. And at the same time, still leveraging all the amazing elements of Wi-Fi on right. the access right. point side on the device side. Mm. And so those another example of the wireless fusion mm. where you have the AI on the device, yeah. you have the connectivity set of techniques growing, and then you have the fact that they're being used in different ways, mm-hmm. whether it's a Teams call, a Zoom call, or whether it's how it's intersecting with the fact that you can take a different approach to enterprise security. Yeah. So, so what's interesting is the costs that enterprise 
bear on things like security mm -hmm. and you know how do you make sure things are authenticated mm -hmm. or how do you make sure your employees are able to access the intranet site right. where they're behind uh, the firewall so they can actually exchange the critical information with each other mm -hmm. then all of that can benefit from these capabilities of 5g right and that's why it really is this 10-year cycle yeah because 5g is has to be impedance matched to the 2020 to 2030 time frame mm -hmm. of all of these different ecosystems adapting to mm -hmm. the current paradigms mm -hmm. of where is cloud where is data mm -hmm. where is devices yeah. you know where's iot and then you have this amazingly rich 300p roadmap where right. Qualcomm's driving additional features right. into the standard. So you have the interoperability element, the global element. Mm -hmm. And so that's an interesting part of, even now as we're looking at 6G, it's about, well, we have to make sure we're then looking even all the way to 2030 is the start point, not the end point, it's right. the start point. So where's cloud gonna be in 2030? Where's compute right. gonna be in 2030? Right. Where's enterprise applications mm -hmm. gonna be in 2030? And where's smart city or smart transportation yep. gonna be? So that's the other interesting part that we're beginning this transformation and expansion of cellular that's so profound in 5G, mm. but it is this continual steps right. along from 2022 here today, all the way through 2030. Wow. Um, how is it that every single time I talk to you, my, my brain feels like it's gonna explode? That was amazing. So, you know, I, it, it's, it's just a whole realm of, possibilities I mean and I think um, that's the key takeaway you know um, that especially as you're looking at more and more a, a diversification of the devices that are going to be connected I mean you're looking at a lot of new use cases right mm -hmm. and a lot of different scenarios and um, and so uh, yeah I, I, I think I mean that's pretty much it right right so what, what people probably should recognize is that as much as folks are saying that this is a, a, a technology that is going to be transformative um, when you examine uh, 5g in the way that you know you we have here yeah. you know you really do start to see the possibilities right and that um, you know there is a lot of complexity as well. Yep. And that, you know, there, I think there's going to be a learning curve that uh, follows the 5G evolution and, uh, you know, in, in informing that ecosystem and driving uh, the growth of that ecosystem and maturation of that ecosystem over time, right? Yeah, and I would say, I guess, another way to think about it. So you can look at even the evolution of smartphone, yeah. right? And the evolution of that core mobile brand by connectivity. Yeah. And so when we look at these adjacent markets, mm -hmm they're not like orthogonally additive to get technical. Yeah. There's also a coherent part that as you're addressing each one of these uh -huh. additional applications with an integrated roadmap, mm -hmm. a one technology roadmap, then all of a sudden people start realizing, well, there's value here, there's value there, there's value here. If I'm doing this for mobile broadband, I get 80% of industrial IoT already. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm doing this for a certain IoT application, I get the capabilities of having better data processing. Right. So that's, I think, the interesting part as well is the additive perspective of the total business opportunity from a mm -hmm. TAM and SAM standpoint relative to the incremental investment mm -hmm. on the technology side. Well, that is that growing opportunity to address right. that. And yeah. that's what's so exciting for Qualcomm right now. Yeah. Uh, as you saw in Cristiano's keynote yesterday, this opportunity with the connected intelligent edge right. about connected compute and automotive and IoT and AR, VR, and fixed wireless access changing how people look at home connectivity or mm. small enterprise connectivity, then a lot of those are leveraging investments mm. that are also enabling the fact that there's amazing new smartphones coming out every year. Right, right. And so you have this integrated investment and a mm. diversified opportunity. Right. And so that, I think that's the exciting part that the, if you think of, of the 5G technology even coming out of 3QP, all the stuff that we're driving there, mm. It's like a, a evolving buffet of technologies moving forward. Right. And you can put different ones together at different times. Yeah. And then you're realizing this broader opportunity. Wow. That's, you know, it's always great talking to you. I always learn way too much. <laughs> My brain is full. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm really glly we had this opportunity to just uh, rap about 5G. 
<laughs> yeah, thank you. I always enjoy you know, it. And actually get it recorded yep. live. And, um, you know, so one last question I have for you, and I asked this to Durga. So what, what, what is exciting for you this year in 5G? Yeah, I would say probably the biggest one is the role of AI mm -hmm. transforming the air interface. Mm -hmm. So we have a project, you know, codenamed AirMax at Qualcomm, okay. uh, you know, internal name. And it's something where we're looking at artificially intelligent air interface maximization. That's right. Exactly so that's a little cool. buzzword. But the point is that you have AI on the device, uh -huh. you have AI in the network. We're now bringing AI into the air interface design itself. So I've been at Qualcomm more than 20 years. When I joined, it was all about you needed to know your statistics, your mathematical yeah. models, uh -huh. coverage, outage, right. different distributions mm. of functions that govern propagation or user statistics. So we're pivoting from a model-driven world where you agree on a generally reasonable model and then you design a system and you deploy it and everyone's working to that model assumptions and it works pretty darn well. But as we look forward, it's truly data-driven. So we can better learn. We're having this conversation in a hotel room in San Diego mm. at this time of day with this amount of network traffic, with this application. So all that information is known. And so the question is, as we're communicating wirelessly, mm. what is the best thing to do? Mm. And you could get off a plane in Chicago, or you could get off a plane in Frankfurt. What is the, that's all different situations. What are the applications you're doing? What are the specifics? So the system can better now understand the specifics and move to be more predictive, rather than, okay, I took a distribution, I'm gonna you know, work on the 10th percentile, the median, the 90th percentile. Instead, we can actually know. So that pivot to a data-driven design touches elements of every part along the chain, whether it's like end-to-end -end performance, whether it's physical channel propagation, mm -hmm. or whether it's even understanding the best way to do you know, minimization of power consumption. So all those elements, we have a new very powerful tool in our toolbox where AI is something that so many of the Qualcomm engineers are working on because it's in changing how they do their job, it's changing how they design, it's changing how Qualcomm delivers products. So it's a very exciting time in 2022 to recognize the full future value of AI in wireless and that 5G plus AI coming together mm -hmm. is, the, I would say, the single most exciting thing that's helping define this future. Wow, wow. So you heard it here first, or did they? <laughs> no, I mean, we've said, I've said 5G AI at MWC as well because it is I something mean, where yeah. it okay. starts changing how we look at 5G. Right. And it's also changing how we look at AI, whether it's for multimedia, XR, automotive. You know, it's interesting where AI on device mm. relative to AI in the cloud mm. and 5G on device, that's where it starts getting different. Okay. All right. Well, you didn't hear it here first, but you heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> John, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate your time. And, you know, to our next Curve audience, Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Remember to uh, check us out at www.next-curve.com and make sure that you connect with this gentleman here if you have any questions about 5G. He is, he is the man. Thank you. All right, take care. Thanks a lot. Visit us at www.next-curve.com.